So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined once again, for the first time in a while, actually, by my good friend and boxing PED expert, but you never thought you'd be called that growing up, uh, Gabriel Montoya. Gabe, how are you? I'm doing okay. You know, and I pick winners, too, when I'm just talking to the fights, you know. <laughs> uh, nobody really calls me for that anymore, but that's fine. I like that we're doing new facial hair every time we have a have an interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep up, but I don't think I've got. I don't think I've got the testosterone. We, we, we might talk about testosterone on another video, anyway. But let's not let's not start too early. Um, last time we spoke, it was when Ryan Garcia had first tested positive for Osterine, or the results had first been uh, made available after the win, which is now a no contest, of course, over Devin Haney. Uh, but last week, the big news was the deal. Uh, some people have called it a plea bargain or the settlement uh, that Ryan Garcia reached with the New York State Athletic Commission uh, that sees him suspended for a year. He's had to fork over, I think, $2 million. Uh, I My first reaction was that it was incredibly lenient. Um, I've seen other people claim that it's harsh. What was your view? and um, Did it match your expectations of what the punishment would be? Um, I, I'm a cynic when it comes to boxing. So, yeah, I wasn't surprised if it was just a year. Um, but I was disappointed. I thought it should have been two. I think Amir Khan got two years for Osterine uh, in, in the, his Kel Brook fight, I believe. Um, Lucien Boutet lost out on a win. I mean, I think they made his his fight a loss, went from like a draw to a loss. Um, so I thought they could have been harsher, especially considering Garcia's behavior, um, his lack of repentance about it. He's not only, you know, uh, unrepentant, but he's accusing everybody of setting him up um, you know, blaming the companies, two different supplement companies uh, that he claims had Osterine in their product that magically landed, uh, you know, in, in his possession. The odds of that are, are kind of astronomical. Um, and even just the, uh, the, it was pointed out that, you know, the supplements that he submitted that he said that were, were to be tested that had the Osterine in them were in uh, unsealed containers, which is not how any of this is supposed to work. Uh, that combined with missing weight, even though that deal had been concluded, you know, Haney agreed to it and they, he, you know, paid a, a fine. Uh, I found that to be an extenuating circumstance is looking at the whole thing. Um, uh, the reporter, uh, Tom Hauser did a great piece on, on this whole situation. I don't know if you read it. On Sweet uh, Science, I think. Yeah. And he, he, he pointed out a lot of details and, and uh, one of them I thought was, was really telling about the, the New York commission was that it's a, you know, they're supposed to have five seats on the panel. They only have four. Uh, they had sort of an absentee executive director who lived in Canada. Um, but I think it was only three of the four panelists that are on that panel were actually at the, or three of them were not at the fight. So they didn't really get to witness what missing weight and then coming in with the drug in your system looks like. Uh, and to the rest of us, we didn't, nobody expected uh, that kind of outcome if Garcia was to win, although, you know, logic dictated it was going to be his power that got him through. Um, but when you look at all this, missing the weight and the Osterine, and then you look at the result, uh, to me, a one-year ban, and, and I think he only, he forfeited a, a million dollars. He forfeited his purse, which was initially two million, but then he missed the weight. And so he paid, I think, like 600000 so it, it, it knocked that amount down. So he paid that back to Golden Boy, but that's not even what they really paid him. It's what the reported purse was. Sure. So there's kind of some smoke and mirrors there about, about what's going to actually happen with that million dollars. So ultimately, yeah, in this era where guys only fight twice a year, it was a slap on the wrist. Yeah, yeah, I certainly thought so. And before we talk about the actual details of the case and some of sure. uh, Garcia's more... I was going to say more wild claims, but I think they've all been pretty wild so far. Um, just to explain to people out there why there's a need to come to a negotiated settlement with an issue like this. Why do the state athletic commissions not simply impose a penalty? I think it's the amount of money that he brings to the table, to be honest, because, you know, I, I've been, I, I, you know, uh, plugged into this in 2010 and in, into the, you know, anti-doping stuff and, and wrote a ton of pieces about it. As, as people that watch these videos know, uh, I've never heard of anybody doing a plea agreement and working it out over two, three weeks. But at the same time, it, it reminded me of like Donald Trump's recent trial where, you know, he didn't testify for himself, you know, behind, behind the scenes, it's going one way, but then he'll go out to the reporters and, 
and kind of put his spin on it. And that's what Ryan Garcia has been doing nonstop. I've been up to uh, the suspension went down. Then he, the next night or two nights later, he's on stage at the punchline uh, with Chris D'Elia, uh, the comedian, uh, disgraced comedian, uh, and you know, doing what is, I guess, a stand-up routine. He, he was standing on stage. <laughs> oh <Well>, yeah, <laughs> with a that smile. Was the wall, you know. Yeah, but it was kind of funny to me just that he would pick Chris D'Elia to, to show up in public with after saying he was going to expose the Bohemian Grove uh, elites and accusing people of being pedos on, on social media. But Chris D'Elia got disgraced because he was soliciting, uh, soliciting underage girls in their DMs on social media. Uh, and several of them came out saying, like, this dude's a, a, a creeper. So I don't know. Once again, Garcia's actions don't match his words. Yeah, I mean, I think the only case I can think of that may be somewhat similar in the way it was negotiated was Tyson Fury and Huey Fury way back yeah. in the day with the uh, boar meat uh, rationale. And it was rumoured at the time, I don't know if it's ever been confirmed, but that UK had to fight the, uh, you know, to, to impose more severe penalties on those guys at the time would have been risking themselves or putting themselves at risk of bankruptcy. And so a, a settlement was reached that allowed both parties to move on. But I think that's the only one I can think of that might be somewhat similar. The only other one I could think of that was kind of uh, reaches an agreement was when Floyd Mayweather got caught with an IV uh, after the weigh-in for Pacquiao, which was against Wada Code and not, not allowed in Nevada. And then eight, 18 days after the, the fight, he got a therapeutic use exemption, like, a, a, you know, post-dated, uh, and they worked that all out. Um, so, like I said, you know, it's it's the, the that old, you know, saying that it's the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. And I, I think Garcia was 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 saying that he was going to be litigious and the New York State Athletic Commission probably didn't want to get into a protracted legal battle. Maybe even looking at the Connor Ben thing uh, and how long that's dragged out. Uh, they just wanted to, you know, move on and, and maybe hopefully be in the Ryan Garcia business. Um, everybody knows that, you know, the United States is dwindling as a boxing power. Uh, and so to, to kind of give the middle finger or a two year ban to a, a guy that just generated a lot of revenue in your city, um, it just wasn't a great political move. So this is the best way to move things forward, I guess. Uh, but it's an incentive to cheat. It's not an incentive to, to, to not. Well, exactly that. I wanted to ask you about the wider message this sends to boxers, because not only is Ryan Garcia a big money maker. He's young. So this will affect him. Not particularly, you know, a year away from the sport, he'll be fine. It would have only been one or two fights, but he's also a huge influencer across social media to a new demographic that boxing wants to attract. What's it telling those boxers of the future about drug taking and the, the system in place to stop them doing so? You know, if you're blessed and highly favored that uh, they let you do it. Uh, that's, that's basically it. I mean, that's kind of the way the sport's always been. I mean, didn't Nevada move a pay-per-view or move Floyd's jail sentence so he could fight on pay-per-view and then do that? Uh, you know, it, it's just kind of the way the way the business uh, works at this point. There's there's no morals. Uh, the biggest, you know, power broker in the business is one of the greatest uh, human rights violators in the world right now, Saudi Arabia. And everybody's just bending over backwards or frontwards, uh, <laughs> do whatever they please. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say it so that you don't have to. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, it, it. It, it's kind of, it's kind of, kind of gross to watch, to, to be perfectly honest, uh, the amount of people that have to say his excellency, but that's a whole other video. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I just think that that's what this message sends and, and that Ryan can kind of lie on so many people, uh, the trashing Victor Conte, trashing Vada, uh, trashing the two uh, uh, supplement companies uh, mm. who had to issue statements saying, yeah, man, we tested the lots and, and there's no Osterine in our product. Um, and he's kind of getting away with it consequence free. He gets to go and be a celebrity uh, at the punchline, you know, two nights later and, and get on stage and be like, oh, they, you know, they're screwing me over. Um, now, granted, I think he's 26 years old. He's going to be a year out of the sport he's turning into more cringe rye than king rye these days uh like you saw, i don't know if you saw him at that poker game where he's just talking 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 he's slowly turning into or actually rather quickly turning into uh the meme of conor mcgregor uh <laughs> talking over uh th that soccer player uh like he's a dude on blow at a party that won't shut up 
I, I think Ryan's not going to be cute all that long. Uh, and this could be a long, hard year for him. You know, I would have liked to have seen two years, but um, that's a, a year of drinking and partying and doing whatever he's going to be doing is going to be real hard on his career, I think. And you mentioned the supplement uh, companies there. So just explain to people out there how exactly this went down, because as far as I'm aware, Ryan claimed that there was some form of contamination, that there was Osterine contained in supplements that wasn't listed on the ingredients list on the packaging. The supplement companies then came back and quite, you know, vehemently denied that this was the case, having tested the products and said there was no Osterine present. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, uh, he apparently had them uh, independently tested, but he sent them in uh, in unsealed containers. So, and then both of these products that are not made in the same place had Osterine in them. Uh, and they had a low level amount, uh, even though like, you know, his first test, he came back was like 60% or 60 times over the, the legal limit in New York, uh, which is wild because like, you know, Austrian is not allowed. It's a banned substance by everybody else, but apparently New York. And I, I don't know the reasoning for New York having an allowance for it. Maybe it's contamination, but he blew past that by 60 times. Um, and so, yeah, they, the, the, so both supplement companies, they had the lot numbers uh, uh, tested and, uh, you know, found the lot number for, for the group that he had tested, tested that batch, found no Osterine. And they're like, we never have Osterine in our, it's not like we have it in our lab sometimes and this happened. It, it's, it's an impossibility. Um, so that kind of got shut down. But I, I think, you know, Ryan is a child of the Internet. He's 26 years old. Um, he's very active on social media. He's part of that generation that grew up with a phone right here. Um, and they swim in conspiracy theories. Uh, he's very, he's kind of right wing. He says he's pro Trump and, and, uh, and all that. And, and, and his, his bad political choice aside, um, he kind of swims in that, uh, it's the internet. So I'm going to swear, but, the, the Trump's kind of one of his political gurus talks about like flooding the zone with shit just hitting people with lies and conspiracy theories that they can't keep up with and verify. And even if you verify it, you know, a lie, as they say, travels around the world, you know, uh, before the truth gets its shoes on. Um, and, and so I think that's all Ryan's been doing. And, and again, that, you know, sets a terrible precedent for, for everybody else. Um, now, whether or not his reputation is going to be, you know, he's, he's going to be polarizing. He's kind of the Floyd Mayweather of his generation in that regard, that there's a lot of people that love him and there's a lot of people that want to see him lose. Um, and we'll, we'll continue to pay for that. So I'm curious to see where his future goes, but I think it's going to be a long, hard year. Um, and how do you trust him in a contractual bout? You know, he, he blew past weight uh, by three pounds. Uh, is he going to come back at 147 and, or is he going to come back at like 150? You know, uh, uh, what's he going to what's he going to do? It's going to be a long year. And I, I'm actually going to be happy to not talk about Ryan Garcia for a year. Well, I'm glad you've uh, chosen us for your farewell address on Ryan Garcia. <laughs> um, it probably won't be the last time I speak about him with some people, I would imagine. Sure, but, sure. Um, on the subject of contamination, we know it's been ruled out by the two supplement companies that he named. Is there any credibility or potential credibility to an argument of contamination? Yeah, I mean, I think on the WADA site, it's over like 70 products um, have Austrian in them. Some of them, uh, I think it's only like 12 actually name it and the rest of them, it, it, it's potential contamination. So it is a thing. Um, unfortunately for him, you know, his story is all over the place. He thinks he's being set up. It's, it's either he's been set up or it's contamination. But like, you know, is it both? Like, I, I don't understand. Um, but, but then he pro provided the supplements, but he didn't provide sealed supplements. Uh, so that further just pokes holes in his, his credibility. Um, he also took a hair test, uh, the hair follicle test, which shows long-term use. And he went to like the premier guy to do it. Um, but as Hauser pointed out in his, his, uh, his excellent piece, um, that guy also participated in a study and, and put out a quote about hair testing and saying that it's only used as a confirmatory test along with your analysis. But even if it comes back negative, that doesn't negate the positive uh, urinalysis test. So he went to a guy that, that kind of shot him in the foot with his own words. Um, so I, you know, I don't put a lot of uh, 
uh, you know, maybe he wasn't using it for a long time. Maybe he only used it for a short period of time because it, you know, it builds lean muscle mass, it burns fat and increases stamina. It's, it's useful in a fight. Uh, it's useful for a boxer cutting weight. Um, and so he still hasn't really explained why it was in his system uh, with any sort of credibility. I think you should just own it and be uh, be done with it. Do we have any sort of uh, barometer of how effective Osterine can be in these circumstances? Like, is it fair to say it significantly improved his performance against Haney, or will we ever know that for sure? Yeah, unless we know how much he was taking it and the and the whole program, um, it's hard to tell how how much he was using, and so you know, and then to say, well, then that's what led to this. Um, you know, like I would say, it's it's like you're you're just getting a, a real peek at a program when somebody tests positive uh, and, until somebody like, you know, like what they did with Lance Armstrong, getting witnesses and, and really, I don't know if you've ever read the Armstrong report, but it's it's really revealing. And you get a sense of like how they did the drug and how effective it was and how that all worked. Uh, with this, we're just we're just guessing. Uh, and with Ryan, you know, his story's all over the place. So it's hard to tell what's real and what's what's Bohemian Grove. What I've read recently as well is that New York State Athletic Commission is one of the more stringent, one of the more strict uh, athletic commissions in the U.S. It, does that hold true? I mean, discounting this most recent case? Yeah, it's strange. You know, I've heard that reputation as well. And then then you look at this suspension and then, you know, reading Hauser's piece. And that's really his beat is New York. Um, he knows the, that those commissions and knows all the players very well. Uh, it sounds like it's a commission in transition and, and kind of weak and that they they actually need to, to to get more experienced people that understand combat sport and aren't just like political appointees. What do you make of the golden boy situation? As you said, he's uh, paid back his purse, mm -hmm. but they seem to be somewhat at odds in the build up to the fight. Then he won the fight. De La Hoya seemed to be back as a huge Ryan Garcia cheerleader, at least briefly. And they've been yeah. very kind of uh, reserved in their either defense or condemnation of Garcia since then. Do you think they're fulfilling their role as a promoter in this case? I think so. I think that's the smart thing. You know, Richard Schaefer uh, who was the CEO back of, of Golden Boy back when uh, drug testing began and, and uh, a lot of their problems began, you know, in terms of uh, positive tests. The first two fighters, you know, that were doing the, you know, uh, Vada testing uh, with them tested positive, Berto and, and Lamont Peterson, and that caused their fights to end. And Schaefer would go on the on the offensive and was very aggressive, and that everybody had an agenda. He was very much like like Ryan Garcia. Um, I think Oscar has been very smart. Um, he's just you know he's just transitioning over to to Las Vegas from uh, his LA headquarters, um, and he's you know he, he's trying to draw people to him. Um, and I think he was smart to just kind of put a middle of the road statement out there because, you know, he's the promoter. He's not the trainer and he's not the manager. He probably isn't dealing with Ryan on a regular basis. Like he said, if uh, if Ryan wins, I'm not going to see him for months. And that's that's probably true. And then, you know, this then the positive test uh, came in. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I don't think he did a, a, you know, a bad job here. I, I think it's better to kind of just sit and wait and see. Um, like, you know, with Eddie Hearn kind of getting ahead of Conor Ben and, and really being out there uh, in the first part of that fight, I think Eddie's been smarter uh, lately and kind of sitting sitting back and just kind of distancing himself and saying, well, that's his legal team. That's, you know, they're all handling it. I think that's, that's really the way to go. The tests don't lie, you know. Uh, false positives are rare. Um, being able to, to prove that it was contamination is rare. Um, and Ryan wasn't able to do that in a state where, you know, he had an allowance for a, a banned substance in, in his system. Um, and he, he, you know, he just, even, uh, this is the thing that Hauser pointed out that I didn't know. Um, the New York State Athletic Commission, there was a, there was a lot of disinformation. I, I've never seen so much disinformation uh, after a fighter test positive that I had with Brian Garcia. And I think it just speaks to who his fan base is and how online they are. Um, but that the New York Commission, there was a rumor that they hadn't drug tested Brian, but they actually had. But they didn't send his test to a WADA accredited lab. They sent it to, I think it was uh, Quest Diagnostics did it. Right. Uh, and they didn't test him for Osterine. So then when after this all went down, the New York Commission took his B sample and they 
had a WADA accredited lab test it, and it came back positive for Osterin. Um, it's Osterin in the system. There's just no no two ways about it. Uh, and it wasn't the drug, it was metabolites. And this whole, there was a billionth of it, and this and that and the other. Uh, that's how they're measured, parts per billion, parts per million, parts per trillion. Uh, so saying it's a minuscule amount, yeah, the amount is the metabolite that you peed out. Uh, we don't know how much you know your body broke down before that. Um, and, and so it, it's all kind of red herring ar ar arguments from a lawyer. And this is more of a, I guess, a psychiatrist kind of question or question for a psychiatrist that is. But do you believe just from your perception that Ryan Garcia is, you know, as you said earlier, throwing as much shit out there as possible and trying to kind of make it hard to distinguish facts from reality? Or do you think he genuinely has now convinced himself that he is innocent? Um, that's a great question. I, I, I'm not inside his head, so I, I really can't answer. But uh, I think he'll never admit it. I mean, you even look at Shane Mosley. Uh, he's never admitted, you know, uh, in public. You can you can Google, you know, Shane Mosley's grand jury testimony cool, and watch yeah. him talk about taking EPO, but he even put out some recent videos because like Oscar De La Hoya had said that, that he, he had beaten Shane Mosley uh, and, and Shane, you know, kind of did this whole thing, but uh, you know, he was on EPO in that, that rematch. And uh, it was before they tested for it in Nevada. I don't think it was even banned in Nevada at the time, but he was on an illegal substance um, and he still doesn't really give that up. Uh, I mean, that, talk about a guy that could really, illuminate a lot of people even more than Victor Conte can. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Shane Mosley is a treasure trove, uh, but he won't give it up. And I say that based on other conversations I've had. Um, so I think Ryan, yeah, you could, you could go along and really convince yourself that you never did anything wrong. There's even the possible plausible deniability of, uh, you know, you have a trainer that's your chemist and you're like, Hey man, don't tell me what you're giving me. <laughs> and, and, and there's kind of this mutual deniability between us, but I know that I'm on some shit and just make sure we flush me out. And that's part of the deal. Um, and I, I'm not saying that as a hypothetical, I'm pulling out of nowhere. I, I've heard that, that there's a guy in the business that has that agreement with people. Uh, so and his name isn't Victor Conte. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, uh, uh, I think there's ways to convince yourself I think even the trainers do that. Uh, you know, I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm just the trainer. Somebody else is a strength coach. And there's these kind of layers of uh, of deniability. Look at the way Freddie Roach would talk about Alex Ariza, but he wouldn't actually come out and and say, you know, uh, exactly what he thinks, but he would make an intimation about the shake or my favorite thing that he ever said to me was like, you want to get rid of drugs in the sport? Get rid of the strength coaches because they're the ones that brought it in. Uh, and he had just hired a new strength coach. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. Great stuff. Gabe, always appreciate your insight. Um, unrivaled as it is in this area. Appreciate that. Good luck with everything you've got going on. And hopefully we won't have to have one of these conversations anytime soon. I'll, I'll get in touch with you for your fight picks instead next time. Hey, I, I, I would love that. Every once in a while, I've, I've got a good one. Uh, I think Joshua uh, knocks out Dubois in five, by the way. And I think Fury finds a way to not have that rematch. Ooh, okay. So those are just two I'll drop right now. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> That's our short yeah. sword. Gabe, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day out there. Hey, uh, back at you, man. Take care. Peace. Thanks.